What's happening, creatures? Tim Kreitz here. As Mark Twain once said, the rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. How are you guys doing? Welcome to 2023. I have been out doing a little rail fanning, just doing a little riding on a beautiful winter day here in West Texas, mid-January. It's about 62, 63 degrees right now, and I'm wearing heated gear under this jacket, and I'm actually a little too hot. So, a really great day for a ride, and I thought this would be a good time to try to revive the channel for 2023. I know I haven't posted in three or four months. I beg your forgiveness. I have failed you. But, you know, the thing about it is, life changes. I have developed some new interests that I've been putting a lot of time into, and the channel kind of went by the wayside. But, the stuff I've been getting into over the past few years especially, that led to me not making very many videos in 2022, is actually going to be a vehicle for making a lot more in, in 2023. At least that's my plan. We'll see if it works out. I'm hopeful that it will. So you guys know, I've really gotten into amateur radio, the amateur radio service, ham radio, since, uh, since 2020, since during the pandemic. And it has sort of become this weird passion for me. It takes up a plurality of my free time now. And I've been getting into doing a whole bunch of very interesting stuff uh, for everything from restoring old transceivers and receivers from the 1940s to uh, doing satellite work, making contact with the International Space Station and the International Space Station radios. There's a presentation I gave to a local radio club on how I do that right here on the channel. And so, quite honestly, I mean, I've still been riding, but I've been riding mainly to work and back. I only took one motorcycle trip in 2022. That was it. Yeah, just not a lot of videos in 2022. And again, I apologize, but we're going to get back to it in 2023. I've made my mind up on that. And you're going to be seeing a lot more ham radio stuff. You'll still be seeing music stuff. If you go and look at all the videos uh, on this channel, my music stuff by far outperforms everything else. Mil over a million views just in my music stuff. And uh, arguably, I guess that's the best thing I do. But uh, the, the motorcycle stuff comes in second, and then everything else, third, fourth, fifth. But the ham radio stuff that I did post in 21 and 22 did pretty well. So I'm going to be incorporating some more of that into the channel. And uh, we're going to start in this episode. I'm heading back to the house, and I want to answer some questions that I've been getting from people who want to get their ham license, people who uh, have a new ham license and aren't quite sure how to use it yet, sort of the noob type of questions, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some do's and don'ts for the new ham radio operator. Um, I, he, I see a lot of mistakes on VHF, UHF, and HF wavelengths from new guys. Go ahead. And uh, they're kind of silly mistakes. And I want to put something together so that you guys know what you do and what you don't do when you're a brand new ham radio operator. If you're interested in the motorcycle stuff, I promise you it's not coming to an end. We're going to do a lot of everything this year. As I said, it's going to be plenty of music production stuff, live performances. Uh, there's going to be plenty of motorcycle stuff, and there's now going to be plenty of radio stuff. So we're going to kick that off by combining, <laughs> by combining all three in this video to an extent, and we're going to talk about ham radio. When you're a brand new ham radio operator, what do you do? What do you not do? How do you not embarrass yourself? How do you not look like a fool? And how do you deal with some of the problems and challenges that a new ham radio operator has to deal with? We're going to talk about that uh, right now. So since coming back to ham radio over the past couple of three years, I've fielded a lot of questions, mainly from people on Facebook, about how to get involved, how to get a license, questions from people who just got their license. And I thought I would go over just some initial things that a new technician who just got his or her 
ham radio license might want to know to help you avoid some of the pitfalls of being a new operator. Number one is on all bands, no matter where you are operating, and that's probably going to be VHF and UHF when you're first starting out. You're gonna find a local repeater. You're gonna have your new Baofeng UV5R. You wanna take some time to gather information and listen and learn about what's going on on that repeater before you key up. Uh, take a week and just listen to how things go, how QSOs go. Grab some call signs, learn some names, that sort of thing. Things that will sort of help you get into the group a little bit more quickly and a little bit more smoothly. You're going to sound like a noob either way, so just kind of take your time and don't make some of the obvious mistakes. Um, for example, if you want to get into a QSO and you hear some people talking, just wait for a pause and say the word break. The next operator in line will say, hey, we just heard a break, go ahead, break, give us your call sign, then give your call sign. If the traffic's a little slower, you can just give your call sign. Use discretion and just figure out what works best. And the main reason I'm saying this is because, number one, you want to get in smoothly and cleanly and you want to always adhere to good amateur practice. But also, one of the big things is you never want to disrupt an involved conversation awkwardly <laughs> and have people say, man, what is that guy doing? So ex for example, if it's just a couple of guys talking, they're just rag chewing, talking about nothing, talking about how their day's going, and the conversation is kind of slow or regular paced, get in there. But if two guys are trying to solve a problem, like if there were, if one guy's working on a radio or uh, is, has some sort of other ham radio related problem and they're going back and forth with questions and answers, you might not even want to get in on that QSO until things calm down or until the situation's resolved. If you get all excited and say to yourself, oh, there's a couple of guys talking, I wanna talk to them, I wanna make a QSO, and you just jump in with your call sign, it's awkward. <laughs> and you don't really want to get into a conversation and get to know people that way. So take your time getting into conversations, listen, figure out what's going on, and before you know it, you'll be talking to guys on UHF and VHF repeater systems like a pro in no time. One of the big things is when you are looking for someone to talk to, and let's say there's no one on the repeater or there's no one on the frequency if you're operating simplex and you're looking for a call, the best thing to do is just give your call sign. And if you're on a multi-city system or a regional system, say maybe what town you're in or something like that, W5GFO in Midland, and see if someone comes back to you. One thing you never want to do in an effort to create a conversation or have a QSO is you never want to make public broadcast announcements on a repeater. So, for example, uh, one of the things that's against the rules would be something like, uh, hey, this is uh, K K0 so-and-so, and -so, and I just wanted to let everybody know that there's been a huge wreck at the corner of 157th and Mockingbird. You might want to avoid that intersection. This message brought to you by K0 so-and-so. -and -so. Everybody have a great day. You shouldn't do that. It's against the rules. You should always call specifically to a station or just let someone know that you're looking for a call on VHF and UHF. On HF, you would call CQ. You would call CQ, 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 calling any station from, in my case, Whiskey 5, Golf, Foxtrot, Oscar. But you would never make a broadcast announcement, a one-way broadcast announcement. That's very much against the rules. Now, there are a few exceptions to that that are acceptable, such as if Aries, the Amateur Radio Emergency Service has been activated, or RACES, or if Skywarn has been activated, or a net control operator is also extended certain privileges for making broadcast announcements for material that is pertinent to the net. No one will probably call you out on that or say anything to you, especially if they know you're new, but they're definitely gonna be behind their mic sitting at their ham shack or in their car or truck going, er, that's, that's pretty bad. So don't do that. Another thing is, since you probably will be operating with a Baofeng UV5R or some similar radio as your first radio, and you will likely, again, be operating primarily on VHF and UHF to begin with, make sure, if you're using a UV5R style radio, to make sure that the Roger Beep is turned off. Roger Beeps are very bad practice on ham radio. 
There are certain situations where they are appropriate and most of the time they're not. And you will definitely sound like a big fat newbie who doesn't know what he's doing if you unkey your push to talk button and the guys on the other end, guys and gals, I guess I should say on the other end, hear or some kind of a Roger beep. It's not acceptable. So make sure that's turned off. And along those lines, just make sure to adopt general, good, overall amateur practice. For example, if you're coming from CB, which a lot of us did, and I, I have no problems with CB, don't take this the wrong way, but don't use 10 codes on ham radio. Uh, lose the CB jargon. My handle is Tim. No, your name, my name is Tim. Your name is whatever. Lose the handle stuff, get rid of all that stuff, and adhere to the communication practices that are outlined by the FCC and by the ARRL. You're gonna, you're gonna sound much more put together, especially as a new operator, if you will adopt those practices early on and don't build bad habits. Also, and this is really important for when you first start doing HF, as a technician, you'll start out doing most likely 10 meters with your new ICOM 7300 and an NFED random wire that's strung out in a tree in your backyard, which is all great. But you wanna make sure you can do things like, know how to give a good and accurate signal report. Know how signal reports work. Know your Q codes. Learn and know Q codes so that you don't get lost and so that you can make uh, QSO is more efficient. That stuff's going to help you out a lot. Number one, to, to sound like you're a little bit more experienced, but also it's going to build good habits that are going to carry you into being a proficient operator. During pileups and contests, keep your QSOs short. And this is something that I've heard with a lot of new operators. New general class operators will do it as well, but mainly new technicians who are getting on 10 meters now that 10 meters is opening up. Thank you, Solar Cycle 25. Uh, they will tend to be a little bit long winded during pileups and during contests. And you don't want to do that. If it's a contest, you need to know the exchange, exactly what the exchange is, and you need to give it, do it quickly, do it cleanly, and move on, and you'll do great. Also, if you are working a pileup, for whatever reason, a contest pileup or a DX pileup or, or something like that, be patient and know that sometimes you're going to have to stick in there, especially as a new operator, you may only be running 100 watts. Again, you might be running a non-resonant type antenna like an NFED half wave or something like that. Be a little more patient and use a little bit different technique to get into some of those bigger pileups going up against stations that are running 1000 watts or 500 watts or full legal power 1500 watts. So don't get discouraged. Again, stick to good amateur practice and you'll do fine. Now this next one is one that might step on some people's toes, and that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to lay out some basic realities about HF operations for new ham radio operators. And one of the big things is that if you're, if you're new on HF, you need to know that not all rag chew groups and conversation groups that you're gonna hear on HF, not all of them want to talk to you. Not all of them are going to be welcoming. And so you need to be perceptive about that. Uh, a big telltale on that is if there are a bunch of guys who have been sitting on 75 meters on one frequency or 40 meter wavelength on one frequency and they've been there for three hours and you haven't heard them give their call sign one time and they're only talking to each other, there's a good chance they don't want to talk to you. They, there's sort of a mentality, especially among the older guys, that this is my frequency, I hang out here all the time and Anybody I don't know, except for me and my buddies, should probably stay away. And again, if you're on a non-resonant antenna on a 100 watt ICOM 7300 and you get all excited, oh, there's a group of people I can talk to, and you give your call sign, you might get a response such as, Billy Bob, uh, did you by any chance uh, hear something out there? Oh no, Jimmy Joe, I didn't hear anything. Uh, there might've been something out there in the pickle weeds, but I just couldn't hear them. And they'll go on with their conversation and you'll be heartbroken. So again, this goes back to listening, taking your time, gathering information and figuring out what situations are prudent to get into and are not prudent to get into. Now, with all that said, I will tell you that most of the rag chew groups that you'll find on HF are going to be very welcoming. There's lots of good people out there and they're always welcome to help an, a new person get started in ham radio. And they're certainly uh, welcome to help you with, for example, a radio check and that sort of thing. Um, also, 
Don't forget to call CQ in those situations. If you can't find anybody to talk to and you've got your radio tuned up well and it's working right, just start calling CQ somewhere where you have privileges. That's one thing that a lot of new operators are afraid to do and you shouldn't be. And that point brings me into number five, which is get involved. Get actively involved somewhere in ham radio where you enjoy operating. Some mode, some technology, some type of operation that you really like. There's field day, there's Aries, as I mentioned before, and races, there's contesting, there's all sorts of things. There are digital modes, there's single sideband, there's CW. One of the worst things that you can do to yourself as a ham radio operator is to stay a technician and do nothing but talk on your Baofeng for 10 years until your license runs out and by that time you're bored with it and you don't even renew. If that's all you want to do or you have a specific reason for doing that only, then hey, more power to you. But you're cutting yourself off from a whole world of wonderful, wonderful things on ham radio. And that point brings me to number six, which is where I'll put an end to this little conversation, is that remember what you are here for. Remember what you are a member of the amateur radio service for. The stated goal, or one of the stated goals of the amateur radio service, and it is a service, it's more than a hobby. The word service, especially according to the federal government's definitions, means something very specific. You are, as a ham radio operator, to learn and advance the art and science of radio. Don't forget that that is a huge part of ham radio, and it's hugely important. And I hope that you will find a place within the amateur radio service where you can thrive in that regard somehow. Okay, I've gone on more than long enough. I think I've gotten my point across. I could talk for an hour on this, but this video is probably long enough at this point with the motorcycle ride and everything else. More to come. Lots of amateur radio, lots of music, and lots of motorcycle stuff. So we'll see you next time. I'm Tim Kreitz, W5GFO. Get out there and learn the art.